Well, hello and welcome once again, friends. Now, you may recall from the last video that the existing windshields on this CJ Peaton Paul were in dire need of replacement. Well, that's because of the heavy staining that had occurred over the years of storage. Well, come on along as I kind of goof around and bumble along in the shop and try to put together two brand new windshields. And of course, as fate would have it, you know, the first section of video that I took depicting the uh, templates and all of that uh, and cutting out the, uh, the windshield frame, that video got corrupted. <laughs> Just my luck. Better turn that radio off before the YouTube police come and give me 90 days in the electric chair for, oh, I don't know, uh, uh, copyright infringement or something. So anyway, here we are center punching the holes. And then we drill pilot holes on each and every one of them. Now there's probably going to be I don't know, probably 50 holes that we're going to have to drill in this before it's all said and done. Now, as every one of you can surmise, this operation takes a great deal of skill. you got to be steely-eyed and, oh man, you've just got to be really, really competent, boys, as you can well see. <laughs> Now a little deburring attachment on the drill will take care of all the uh, the burrs and and the fuzz that's left over from the drilling. This is 25 thousandths 2024 20, T3 aluminum, by the way. Did somebody say repetitious? Now I'm thinking I was using 93 thousandths plexiglass on this. I'm pretty sure I did. I, I would have to go out in the shop and double check. My mind isn't as sharp as it used to be, fellas. Uh, here we see I'm drilling and clecoing the, uh, the plexiglass to the frame, trying to get it all fitted up and, and uh, ready for further operation. Looks like I'm doing a little head scratching. Now the drilling operation. Now this is going to be a case of do as I say and not as I do. Anytime you're going to be, of course you're going to be using a backer block, but anytime you're going to be drilling plexiglass, don't do it with a normal twist drill like this dummy is doing. Uh, take my advice, go down to the hardware store and get a step drill. You get one that starts at eighth inch and then goes up to, I forget, three or four different steps. But those drills are not fluted like this, these normal twist drills. And so you don't have the uh, uh, thing trying to pull through as it breaks through the back. Believe me, you'll love that, that step drill. It'll save you a lot of heartache. Now that little tip right there is worth the price of admission. Plus you won't be drilling your fingers like old dummy here uh, has a tendency to do. Of course, we all keep alcohol, band-aids, and iodine handy in the old Shoparinsky, don't we? Now, properly bandaged up, I'm ready to go. Be sure and keep the plastic sheeting on both sides of the plexiglass during this whole operation. Now here I'm the location of that particular panel. And it doesn't hurt to chamfer your holes just a little bit, just out of an abundance of uh, workmanship and pride in what you're doing. And we drill and then deburr all of our small backer pieces. We're, we're going to have uh, back plates on all of these windshields instead of a million washers that, you know, kind of look unsightly and, and unworkmanlike. And here we kind of get an idea of how our back plates will come into play. 
And, of course, more repetitiosity, uh, you know, just over and over and over again, ad nauseum. This is the stuff that will build character, fellas. Either that or it'll drive you insane. One of the two. Okay, all drilled, all clecoed, uh, ready for final fitting on the airplane, and then we'll commence on the other windshield. And back at the aerodrome, it's time to take the old windshields off. Now they have, they have served faithfully and admirably for the past 15 years, but there comes a time for retirement, and this happens to be that retirement time. Now I'm going to try to salvage those fittings and uh, those attachment fittings and use them on the other windshields. Well, I'll be a jazz hack. Doggone it. <laughs> Why does that always happen to me? <laughs> now, fitting to the fuselage is always an interesting experience. Uh, I find that you can certainly learn new cuss words while you're doing this kind of stuff. And very nice, very attractive. Now back at home, I'm cleaning up the uh, the aluminum in a little a, a very weak acid etch. Now, I make my make up my own acid etch, but you can buy bottles of uh, acid etch or etching compound from places like Aircraft Spruce and Specialty uh, Wicks. Uh, places like, well, you could probably go to a paint store and find it there. Now, the reason for this procedure is to give the aluminum a microscopic etch, a microscopic rough surface, if you will, for the primer to be able to latch onto and, and stick to more tenaciously. Now, to kill the acid that's left on your aluminum, you'll make up a bath of uh, water and baking soda and put that on your aluminum and let it sit for a little bit and then rinse it off with plenty of cold water. Now, don't get in a big hurry here. We want to give that, that acid wash plenty of time to, to do its trick. And that's to get in there and, of course, etch the aluminum. Have mercy, look at all that striped green. Well, the point here is to, uh, to clean your parts, your bare parts, with plenty of acetone. And you don't want to be touching any of this aluminum after you do this with your bare fingers. And the reason is your fingers have oil. Your skin carries oil and you don't want to have fish eyes and all that kind of malarkey showing up. Uh, as you paint. Now normally I would use a two-part epoxy uh, stitch usually and then maybe uh, stitch enamel or aerothane but I don't have any so we're using rattle can we're doing it with uh, the Rust-Oleum Professional and that tends to be pretty good rattle can paint now, I'm sure you've noticed that unsightly trailer back over there in my neighbor's garage. 
Well, he's from Zimbabwe, and occasionally he'll grab a trailer like that and bring it home, and somehow or another, I don't know where he gets all this stuff, but he gets tires and uh, just all kinds of stuff. You can't even imagine the, the kind of odds and ends he'll pack into that trailer and then take it down to the coast, I suspect, and put it on a ship. Now this is just a guess. And send it over to Zimbabwe for what I don't know. Now, as luck would have it, the weather turned cold for, I don't know, three or four days. So I'm having to keep the heat on in my shop uh, to keep it above 70 degrees for all of this paint to cure. So our intrepid windshield smithy decided to get smart and go find his step drill. And this makes life worth living, boys, when you're drilling plexiglass. No more cracked plexiglass, believe me. This does the trick. And it's time to put all the screws and nuts and uh, everything together. See how it looks. Well, now so far it doesn't look too bad. Well, what do you think, fellas? Not bad from a, a rube from out in the country, huh? So I guess that's just about going to wrap up this little episode. Sorry I couldn't find the, uh, the first uh, video of the templates and such. If I can find it, I'll put it up. But as always, everybody, thanks for watching.